Hello everyone. We, well, my the, looks like the audio is peaking. Let me know if the audio is too loud. But welcome to webinar number 28. We are uh, talking about power requirements today, and and for that discussion, we brought in Gordon and also Bronco. Bronco will be primarily focusing on the bus and power with that, and Gordon will be talking about everything else. So I want to make sure that uh, you guys direct your questions to them. And, uh, and I want to go over quickly on how to go about doing that. Lyle is also in Cincinnati joining us, and he's going to be moderating and shooting some questions to my phone because I won't be able to check for questions while I'm filming. So with that said, it's a little hard because I'm looking at a screen instead of at the camera. Uh, but I am going to move here real quick and show you my desktop. If you want to ask a question, just click on this open discussion tab and then down go down and click on join the discussion and when you do that it will populate some other items down here so you can sign in with any of these or you can just pick a name and so I could just say test and rather than put in a password and that I could say I'd rather post as a guest it'll ask for an email and we'll just do I'm typing with one hand and uh, and you can go like that. Then you can come up here and and uh, and everything's test today. <laughs> and uh, submit my question like that. So now you can see that I made a comment up here, and that's how you guys will give your questions to us. Lyle again will be will be fielding those, and uh, and shooting those to me, and we'll be able to address your question address your questions that way. There's Gordon. Hello, everybody. So, all right, go ahead and yeah. you ready, Ron? Yeah, I think we'll yeah. start with the bus. How's everybody? This is Bronco, by the way. Yes, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm Bronco. Every one of your buses will come with a cord like this. You got your bus side, and then your house side, which is adapted, has an adapter. We call it a 30 amp, 110 volt plug with an adapter. It uh, so you can actually adapt it to your house. You don't have to add the plug to your house because all you really need it for is charging and w cooling. Getting your cold plate cold and your hot water warm is the whole reason you plug it in at night and so, charge your batteries. So I'm just gonna plug this into a standard outlet. Bronco will show you how to plug in the the bus itself. And you just got a twist lock, so it just goes into the side. And then it just twists in place. Talk, talk to him, Bronk, about uh, when you do plug this in, to, we call it shoreline power. Oh, yeah. You want to make sure the vehicle, the inverter. The, on the interior, so once you plug in from the outside, you don't have to use your inverter. Your inverter is only when you're at the mobile stage. Um, when you have outside power, we call shoreline power. You just need to plug it in and everything should work as long as you're not using that adapter per se on your generator plugged in the right way. Um, and that, that's whole, another ex way we have to explain that one. Um, the, it reduces the power that comes into your van when you're using that power. So when if you have it plugged in all the way to your generator, it will... Everything will be powered off of your plug from the outside, the shore power. But when you're not using your shore power, you're using your inverter as you drive down the road. Your everyday, your mobility verge side of it is your inverter side. Your permanently parked location type setup is your power cord that comes from the shore. We call it shore power, which would be your house, 110 volts. So, and once you've got your bus plugged in, it's got a 
It's got a converter box that tells everything to do this power to, to here. It just charges your batteries. It makes everything run off of just the house power itself. So you want to make sure when you do have shore power that you've turned off your inverter. Yeah, inverters always, unless you're unplugged, the inverter's back on. If you want, I mean, you got to have so, hot water. As soon as, as soon as you plug in your bus, there's a transfer switch. The transfers, instead of using your batteries, is transferring to the power coming from your extension cord. But you do need to turn that inverter off or you're still going to be pulling off those batteries. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, which well, the inverter runs the same power as the the plug itself. So, when you're plugged in, the only thing that you're doing to your batteries is you're charging them, and your shaver is running off of them directly. So, when uh, your inverter's on, everything's running off your batteries, and your shaver's still running off of it. So, you're causing more things to drain the batteries faster. But it, it it's it's a mobility thing. So, when you're driving around, the vehicle charges the batteries too. So it has multiple things built in. So the shore power, when you're parked, plain and simply, you do not need your inverter on. Talk, talk to them about um, the air conditioner and uh, does it run off the batteries? And talk, talk about how the air conditioner works and only can work. Oh, it, yeah, the air conditioner only works when you're plugged in from the outside. Um, and it... Uh, it does have a separate plug on the interior, but it, it runs off of the 110 volt, 30 amp power. Um, and it does have a plug on the interior to where you unplug it. If you only have limited power, you can take a secondary extension cord and unplug your air conditioner from the inside where a plug is mounted. And you can run it um, on an extension cord if you don't have the sufficient power to run your whole vehicle, the whole bus itself. Um, so when you're and when you're driving down a route, you, the AC is not going. No, to the the top AC will not work. It's going to be your vehicle's air conditioning that runs and keeps it cool. Um, when you're driving from point A to point B, um, it, it your top AC will not be working unless you're plugged in. So and then, but your vehicle will be charging your batteries. Your air conditioning on your vehicle will be running. Um, It'll keep it cooled down. Yeah, your requirements with your, like we were talking with the adapter on the extension cord, just got to buy a generator with that 110 amp, or 110 volt, 30 amp plug on it, or get your event to set it up that way. Some events will pl do bring in power requirements. Is that right? Yep. So when you go to your event, you can ask them if they can bring you in that certain power to actually power up everything. Instead of be running that adapter, because the adapter limits your your full in, full capability of running everything. Um, so, and then once you're plugged in and the batteries are getting charged, it's it you do have to give it a good 48 hour charge if you kill the batteries completely. The charger's not a super duper fast charger, or you'll burn up your batteries. Um, and meaning is. When you, if you go out and you spend all weekend running on batteries and you kill those batteries, they won't charge overnight. They take at least two days to fully restore those batteries. Is one you, of the other you want, problems. You want to plug it in every yeah, night. Yeah, plug it in every night consistently. And let's say you're gone for a weekend running it. If you're plugged in there or not plugged in, always let it just stay plugged in to recharge it. Because um, it, it can take up to two days to fully recover batteries. Um, if you've if you've drained them completely, but you'd be coming home, nothing would work. Bat lights would be dull. I mean, you'd you'd know your batteries were dead. The uh, just one thing to point out: the the battery on the vehicle itself is completely separate of all the equipment and what runs yes. the shaved ice portion of it. So, if you ran these batteries dead at an event, the battery that starts your car. Is fully charged. It, it, it's a completely separate system, you can unique still drive of home. itself. Even though that motor will charge the batteries that that we're using at the event, as you drive around, it's charging. Yeah. Now, when you get an event, you obviously, if they have power, utilize it, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, and and you really want to utilize it so you can use the air conditioner um, at your events stay comfortable in the vehicle if, if you choose to not pay for the power or you don't have any power 
Then you don't have the air conditioner. So we got a couple questions. <clears throat> what what options do I have for power on the bus if there is no way to plug in? So you, so generator. Yes, you're going to need you're, you're going to need a generator. I can show you the generator that we use. We actually run it's it's actually just a two thousand watt generator. Um, we're still when we're running the air conditioner with it, and we operate all day long at our event. So. Little Honda I'm on a gallon. Now. It's like a half a gallon of gas for a gallon of gas for eight hours on the little Honda generators. Um, that, that generator, it, it's lightweight. It's like a briefcase. It's the Honda 2000. We just throw that in the back door. When we get to our spot, we put it um, over by the uh, driver's side door, the back of the vehicle. We plug the bus in, and now we have air conditioning. Like Bronco said, it's just, I don't even know if it's a gallon tank, but this thing will go all it day. It's a half gallon. It, it takes it, a full gallon yeah, to run it's, it. It's, one of, it's, it's an awesome generator for the bus. It's, it's really slick. So I think we'll go over into now 110 volt, the, the AC portion. It seems like I get most of my calls are people damaging their shavers because they're at an event. And uh, they, they think they have adequate power, but uh, they may be sharing power with their neighbor, and that neighbor might be using a warming plate, and a whole bunch of people are pulling off one 20-amp breaker. Well, it's the watts that hurt you, and I can kind of show you. Let's say you do have a breaker or an outlet that's all to yourself. If you're using, and we have some 100-foot cords plugged in, if you're going to be using a 100-foot cord, we can show you what happens if you use a 14-gauge cord versus a 10-gauge cord. And once you start getting into 100 feet long, you have to purchase the heavier due to your cord or you'll burn up your shaver. As crazy as it sounds, it, uh, when you use a long, skinny extension cord, that my best way of describing it to someone would be uh, it's like it's like trying to start your car out in third gear. You just don't have the giddy up power to, to do a burnout. You can't take off quickly, and that's what these shavers need. They need that initial first gear and all that power to, to, to spin all those ice cubes across the blade. If you if even if you do have a great cord and you have many people sharing that outlet, you'll you'll see and you'll noticeably notice that shaver starting out very, very slow. And when that happens um, you have all this power going into the motor. If that power is not being used, it heats up like a toaster. Um, it, it gets cherry hot. It uh, it has it can't use up the power. It can't it can't spin the the ice cubes. So that power just starts dumping into it, and it starts to heat up and heat up and heat up. Eventually, you will burn up that shaver. Even if you can get it to spin slowly, that thing is starting to to overheat. Let's show you some. Uh, and, and I think that's a big factor. I think you, you touched on it initially, but when you have, I mean, we, we get a lot of calls that are saying, why is my shaver shaving? And really it comes down to that if you don't have power going to it, that's what's happening. It has nothing to do with the shaver. It has everything to do with the power being supplied to that shaver. Okay. So we have 200 foot cords. We have a 10 gauge cord and a 14 gauge cord. This is your typical extension cord you would see in everybody's garage. This is more your commercial um, contractor cord running heavy equipment. It's, it's, it's almost uh, maybe three times thicker. If, if you look at this meter, if I plug in 100 feet away and I test the power in this cord because I'm using a heavy cord it's showing 121 volts 0.7. Now that's just sitting there waiting for me to use. Now I've got this uh, 10 or uh, the, the the 14 gauge cord. I plug it in. You're gonna notice <laughs> zero. Sorry. <laughs> One eighteen point two. So right off the get go, I've lost three volts. 
because of the longer cord. But truly what that boils down to is, is the watts. And the watts is what drives the, the power in the motor. So when we start talking about generators, you hear people say, how, how big of a generator do we need? And I start talking watts, like a 2,000 watt generator, a 5,000 watt generator. It's the same thing with these shavers. So even though I have 117 volts, it's the wattage that I'm going to be struggling with that, that gives this shaver its initial like giddy up and go. We'll, we'll run the shaver, 100, or 100 foot cord, 14 gauge, and show you how it runs. So, here we go. Can you hear this? Right now that shaver's barely turning. It's struggling. It's like I say trying to start a car out in third gear. The longer I keep trying to do this, I start to heat that motor up. Eventually I'll burn that motor up. Now, we're going to go to the 100 foot 10 gauge cord which also gave us 121 point something volts big difference the other one almost wouldn't even run it even the, uh, the 100 footer even it has its effect I mean, that's just the, the repercussions of extension cords. And if you have to be drug way out there, 100 feet, anything longer, you, you, start, you start pushing your shaver. It, 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 it's, just, it's just hard on them. Um, so you always want to have a, even all the cords that we use here, they're all a 10-gauge cord. Um, if, yeah, or even a 12-gauge cord if you start talking like 25 feet to your outlet, a 12 gauge cord works perfect. Any questions? Uh, no, I just, just so they know that too, a lot of people will go and get a 100 foot cord because they're like, oh, I'll be able to use this wherever. I can reach 100 feet or, so whenever you're close to your power, use as short a cord as possible. We, yeah, in fact, I would rather see people buy a 50 foot cord and two 25 foot cords and gang them up to get their 100 feet because if they can, they can get away with the 25 foot cord they're they're better off especially if they're super busy I mean the shavers do heat up even when you have perfect power but if you're like really really busy it's just it's just better on your motor to have the shorter cord um, I got a couple <laughs> questions here yeah so one um, somebody wanted to see the inverter on the bus they want to see the inverter um, Get one um, we, we could show um, an inverter. Okay, and then, um, all right, let me, let me go through these real quick so we can answer them. Uh, Lyle just had some comments also. He said, uh, uh, you actually need a small 3,000 watt, the 2,000, um, these are texts, so they got kind of jumbled a little bit, okay, but they, they'll always kick on the AC, Lyle's, maybe insufficient. The AC, the AC company recommends 3,000. I'm glad Lyle said that. Um, the 2,000 watt generator that we use to run our air conditioner, it really is too small. Um, you, a 3,000 watt is, is what you need to use. In fact, we have another 2,000 watt generator. It's not a Honda. It won't run that air conditioner. This Honda, it does run it. Um, another thing you need to remember is that's really only running the, the air conditioner. Um, the shaver in the buses strictly run off of batteries no matter what. Even, the, even when you're plugged into shoreline power, that shaver is still running off of a battery all the time. So those batteries have to be charged. And then, and then they also asked about the impact that the solar panels have on the batteries. Um, the, like very, very little impact, but they, they do um, tender the batteries, which means... Let's say you didn't use your bus for a while and you, and you had it outside, it, it does. It, 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 it maintains. Yeah, it's like a maintenance almost. 
you will get some charge. It's not going to like keep you. You can't. You cannot depend on them. It, it's. It's just. Um, it's almost like solar power is still a little bit in its infancy. It, it does help, but we haven't found it to be extreme. But I'll tell you, it, it, it's worth having. At least we believe so, and it helps the environment. And and I've been in many farmers markets and art festivals that, that I couldn't get in. But but now because we're solar, and of course we also have the natural flavors, which this bus isn't, but the the, the, the natural line, we get into everything now, but the solar is a big deal that we can say, hey, we're, we're capturing the, the energy from the sun. Want to show that inverter? Also, there was a mention on cables that fire departments, they won't allow a 24 gauge. So there's a 22 gauge minimum on cables anyway. A uh, 22 gauge? That's yeah, like, that's like that's, nothing. <laughs> I don't even know. That's yeah. smaller than a number two pencil. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's, a, to, it's a toy. That's yeah. not meant for business. Yeah, you okay. Uh, but that's yeah. great just for just pointing that out. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just quickly just show you the inverter. There's not much to see other than point it out to you. Oh, that's good. Interior. So your inverter is just mounted on top of your power supply box. The inverter is actually converting the 12 volt batteries and turning them into 110 volts. And then and that it will run like appliances. Your you got your water heater, your water pump that run off of it, and your blower that run off of it. So that's pretty much the three tools that will be used by your inverter. Is is those three? But the inverter is literally meant to just power those up for when you're on the road and moving and mobile. So um, and it has reset things. Once you get it, and see it, you'll you'll notice it. it I just flip it on and flip it off. When you're not plugged in, or when you're plugged in, you turn it off. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's. And it's, you actually have a convenient switch. For yeah, doing we do that, have right? a switch. You don't have to go to the inverter to do it. No, no. He's put it up here now. Oh, so it's right by it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And this is the plug we were talking about for the air conditioner. If you don't have some efficient power to run the whole vehicle, and you want to just run it off an extension cord, you can plug your air conditioner into this and run it outside of your vehicle separate of your other plug if you're tripping breakers um, at an event so we tried to separate it so you could use it easier in two ways Do, maybe maybe we'll run generators real quick while yeah. we're showing the shaver and then we'll go into the building so I'm I mean I could give you the example of of this trying to run the shaver it, it's it's not gonna work um, it, uh, so we're going to show you this generator. We purchased it, I believe, at like Walmart, or I mean uh, Home Depot or Sam's Club. If you notice, this says 5,550 5, watts. It has a starting watts of an 8,550. What starting watts means is when you initially turn something on, it might need this surge of power. This generator will lug down and create that power, but only momentarily for a little moment in time to get that piece of equipment running. And then once that equipment's running, then this generator comes back and runs at 5,550 watts. When you buy a generator, you gotta be really careful. This is the most important, which is the, the running watts. When we tell you you need to purchase a, a 3,500 watt generator or bigger, it needs to be the running watt to run a shaver. When you start getting into running a building and an air conditioner, freezers, what all that stuff, you need to be um, 8,000 watts, running watts or bigger. But we'll run this generator and show you the shaver run. And that's going off a hundred foot cord, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we're um, we're running off of our this is uh, the 10 gauge cord. 
You want to do the Honda for fun? Plug me into the Honda. <laughs> okay, so okay, all right, so listen to the generator. So yeah, listen to the generator and watch the ice. Um It won't run it. It it won't even touch it. Not only will I hurt the shaver, but I'll end up hurting the generator. Um And that that's something else we probably should talk about real quick is is do you want to be 12 volt or do you want to be 110 volt? And Aaron, do you want to show this? Do you want to try to like link over or yeah. you want to do that at the very end and they can see it? Yeah, we'll talk about the end and I'll show so, them how to get so there. So stall on this. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay so mm -hmm. to the building. The building and kiosk, the carts, they're all very similar. They all have the same water system. They all have the same blower. Basically the same lighting. The buildings when they're enclosed like this, the one thing that those don't have is your air conditioner. Um, they, they all come, well the, the buildings come equipped with a outdoor breaker panel. Oh, this panel's ready for me to kind of tear into for you. But this panel can be, uh, when you bring in your power, when you have your electrician wire up your building, this can be wired as 220 volt or 110 volt. If you look close, I've put a red jumper in here. That red jumper allows me to, to convert this box to 110 volt. And, uh, but what I really wanted to, to express to you is your building is going to come like this with no wires hanging out. Your electrician can either bring power in from from across the ground or under the ground up into your building or you can bring it in from overhead into a mast which you remove this cap and it the power go, is strung up through a pole and across to where they're they're pulling power from. Yeah, you, you hire an electrician. Um, and he'll know about the jumper. I probably shouldn't even mention that, but I do want you to, to understand when uh, 220 is ideal. 220 power, you can uh, if you can get 30 uh, on a 30 amp breaker. That's that's the ideal scenario. And uh, what makes that ideal is 220 actually divides your building in half. It one breaker is like running 110 volts to it, and the other breaker is like running another 110, which is your 220. So. It splits your building in half. It just it just creates adequate power for everything, rather than just one 110 volt line feeding your whole building. Now, when we start to tell people this stuff, they're like, "Well, do I need a 220 volt shaver?" No, because we're taking 220 volts and divide splitting it in half, which uh, you would you still want a 110 volt shaver. So everything in the building. Including your water pump, your heater, everything is 110. Your everything. shaver, all of it. Everything in it is 110 volt. Um, but but it's good. To, but you have 220 feeding the building. Yeah, and they want to do that. If you can that, get 220, that's, that's sweet. And the reason it's the Ultima is because you're not in the middle of making a snow cone and you trip the breaker from the location where you're pulling power. Like, let's say you're in front of Walmart. If you trip the power in their building, now you gotta shut your stand down, run in, reset the breaker, come back out and finish the snow cone. Even though this building has breakers on it, um, if, if you have inadequate power feeding these breakers, now you're gonna pop those breakers where you're pulling power from. And it's even more inconvenient than that because usually you have to get somebody else to flip them. It's not like you can go in the building. That's and flip right. Them. They're not gonna be like letting you in the back room in their yeah, right. communications room or wherever that stuff is. Um, okay, so now that, that kind of gives the gist of it. Now I'm going to talk to you about troubleshooting. Let's say you can't get 220 volts and your, your, your only access is 110 volts. You really need to be tied into a 30 amp source. 
which means you're pulling off of a 30 amp breaker. The reason for that is when you start to add up the amps of the shaver or the air conditioner and the lighting, when you run shavers, the shaver, the lighting, and the air conditioner, you're getting close to that. Um, I'm going to show that. I'm actually going to bring that up. Uh, for you guys to be able to see this, you can go to our forums. Which So you go to community and then down to forums. And then you can come into here and you can go to buildings. And at the very bottom, we went through and did the power requirements for shaved ice buildings. And... And so you can see here what Gordon's talking about. And if you want to elaborate on it, Gordon. Okay. okay, so you notice like right off the get-go right here, it says air conditioner, 17 amps. Um, so by the time you run that and you throw some uh, the lights on at another three, that leaves you roughly 10 left to, to run your shaver. Now, we, we, we actually run these buildings all the time on a 20-amp breaker. The AC, that 17.39 amps, whatever, that's that's a, that's a starting amp pull, which means once that air conditioner is up and running, those amps drop. Same with the shaver. So it allows us to, to, to squeeze by on a 20 amp breaker, but what really gets you to pop in that breaker is this hot water heater that's pulling 27 amps. It, it, it might sound funny in here. I'm gonna go yeah. like that. <laughs> okay, so switch us back over here. We know generally because we're pulling from a source, the way a breaker works is the breaker starts to heat up and uh, and it trips. When uh, when we run a building off of a 20 amp outlet, 110 volts, which means we're we're going to be struggling. We're going to be probably most likely be popping that breaker. At the store that we're plugged into generally you can run your heater for about a minute and then it's going to pop it but to run your lighting the air conditioner and the shaver you, you have a good chance of not popping it the, usually when it does pop it's because you've turned your air conditioner on the same time you went to shave and poof it, it pulled too many amps there there are tricks though to um to to have these things not happen and that is okay if I need to like uh, wash my hands or turn the pump on I do not want to be shaving in fact I may need to turn off the air conditioner these are just in worse scenarios when uh, you don't have adequate power now we have had people I talked to you a little bit earlier about splitting the power on your building 200 210 volts going into your breaker box and it splits into two 110 lines. You can do the same thing at a store. Generally a store has a series of spots where they have power you can pull from. You may choose to plug in half of your building to this outlet on their on their storefront that's a 20 amp outlet. Now you can plug your other portion of your building to another outlet that's on its own 20 amp breaker now you're golden again. Um, there are things too like, uh, let's say you're out on the street and you don't have all these outlets, you just have one outlet and you've got an ice box, show me right here. Aaron. You've got an ice box here on the side of your building where most people store their ice, they're plugging it in to this outlet. If they still have inadequate power, they, you can buy and I had an example. You can buy, and this this isn't it, but they look like this. It's like a a timer that that turns. You can you can plug in your your free your freezer, and you can set this to turn on um, at ten o'clock at night and run until eleven o'clock in the morning when you open your stand. And eleven o'clock that timer kicks off, but because you froze your ice all night long, it stays frozen in your ice box and you're not using any power it's shut off for the day and then when you get ready to close it just automatically 10 o'clock comes around poof your ice box turns back on freezes hard all night long and resets itself for the next day just another trick you can do to if you don't have adequate power and you have the perfect spot how, how can you operate and, and, and kill make a ton of money
with with 110 volts on 20 amps. Um, what am I forgetting? So uh, do another option. So say they just don't have adequate power. There's nothing they can do to split it, bring in two. Like, like they have the option of doing a 12 volt shaver and then, I, I mean, even, even this guy could run your building, right? I mean, we talked about it not supplying the AC adequately, but if you did a right. 3000 watt. Yes, okay, so, and, and you, can, you can actually, I mean, you, you could dang near make this building 12 volt. You, you could. But what Aaron's talking about is uh, your shaver pulls quite a bit of power. Um, and let's say you still want to use your air conditioner because you're in Phoenix. But uh, you could turn your shaver into 12 volt. Well, you're going to buy a 12 volt. So at nighttime, those batteries are charging all night long because you're shut down at 10 o'clock. The next day you come, you disconnect your charger, the battery's full and ready to go for the day. Now you're operating the shaver off of 12 volt, but the rest of your location off of 120 um, or even a generator. Um, or you can run the whole building with a generator, and they're not much bigger than this, on an 8,000 watt generator, and people literally roll these in their building at night. And... Uh, Roll them out in the morning. There was one guy, he mounted his generator to his roof. It was propane. He could start it from below. His ta propane tanks were at the bottom. It was pretty slick. <laughs> it was like a turbine generator. I don't even know, but it was, it was cool. Um, but that's how you can, you can use 12 volt to your advantage. 99% of the time when people call me and they're asking about 12 volt, I, I, I truly almost steer them away from it unless they're in a vehicle because the money that they spend, by the time you pay the extra money for the 12 volt motor in the shaver, a really good battery, a really good battery charger, you've, you've pretty much spent enough money. Three quarters of it for yeah, you've spent three quarters of it at least that a little bit more. You could have had a generator that will do all those things, and you can use for lighting at night or or, or camping or at home. Now you have now you have the beauty of a generator, which which the twelve volt. I, I just think your money ahead to buy a generator, unless unless you're truly mobile and it's and you're moving this thing, and there really isn't these opportunities to use a generator. For instance, like a farmer's market. Yeah, and they they don't let it happen. Art the fancy arts festivals, no generator. Music festivals, no generator. So now, now all of a sudden you're back to okay, um, twelve volts pretty slick. <laughs> and of course that's why we're here. We we'll help we help you uh, weigh it out and we tell you the costs and and uh, but there really is a way to pull it off in any in 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 any fashion or situation that you're in and and we're always here to help you. And we hope this video helps many of you, but uh, you can always call. What else, sir? Okay, so let me check questions here real quick. We, we've had people say, well, why don't I just uh, buy a 110-volt shaver and get an inverter and invert 12-volt um, into 110? To, to, to do that? You're, 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 you're talking a few thousand dollars in order to pull that off. That's why the shaver in the bus is only a 12 volt shaver because we didn't create or want to spend or pass that expense on to you guys. I don't know, I don't know 4,000 bucks, I'm not even sure, but it's crazy yeah, it's to invert. What it takes to run that shaver to invert 12 volt into 110, you could have went out and bought yourself um, five generators and an extra shaver. You could have bought a 12 volt shaver and a 110 volt shaver and been ahead. But anyway, so you know. Okay, so real quick, uh, Lyle had a correction. It was 12 gauge versus 14, not the 22 to 24. <laughs> I don't know where. So you know how we were talking about yeah. the cord that small. Oh. He was like, he didn't mean to say 22 to 24. He said that 12. it's 12 volt versus, or 12 gauge versus 14 gauge. 
It, so they're not going to let you go to a 14 gauge. Uh, the fire department yeah, is their minimum is going yeah, to be 12. And that stuff's changing. I mean, there's festivals here. The first thing they do is they check to make sure you have a 12 gauge cord or bigger. Now, extension cords work backwards. The smaller the number, the bigger they are. So a 10 gauge cord is heavier and bigger than a 12 gauge cord. But, uh, and the reason the fire, I mean, they, they, it causes fires. The cords are too little. They, they heat up and they melt and they go and they melt. Yeah, it's horrible. So. And, uh, and he also just brought up, we, we kind of changed our recommendation to a 4,500 watt generator to run the 3,000 rather than a 3,000. Um, and I, I, I do, I do agree with that. And I kid you not from one generator to the next, I swear they're different. Even though they all say they have a running Watts, we've no. probably have bought a, a half a dozen different generators. If you notice the generator we, we are using, it's a 5,550 watt generator. I've, I've, I've told people they can get away with a 3,500 watt generator, but I've used 3,500 watt generators that I, I wish I hadn't even said it, that they, they don't work. So really, but you've used to some that have. The, yeah, right? I have. I've done it. So really to eliminate that worry, it's like yeah, go to 4,500. Yeah, go buy the 4,500 watt generator and know you're covered. And now you can run your lights and a radio, a fan, whatever. You know? And if you're going to power your building, get an 8,000. It's got to be 8,000 watt or bigger. When we apply for events, generally there's a, a section on that application where it asks about power requirements. Um, I, I, I always show up with the kiosk, which means I'm not using an air conditioner, but uh, I've, I, I go the bare minimum. I go 110 volt, 20 amps, breaker. That leaves me so I can run the shaver, run the lights. If I need to use the water system, I've, I'm not using the shaver. I can dedicate the, that, those amps to that water system. Um, the hot water heater, like I say, will run for a, 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 a time. Um, generally, at events, they're not requiring you to have hot water. They just need to see running water, so we never turn the hot side on. But uh, I always go the bare minimum at, at events. If I was in a building and I, w I would want the air conditioner, then, of course, you need to, f you need to be able to you need to buy the power that's on a 30 amp breaker which yeah. is going to cost you more money but yeah. so you know and uh and just to add to that uh, almost every one of my events they test my hot water they so test. so some some events you never know some events are going to require that you have hot water some are not so the uh the the, the ones where i've been tested at events are the if i'm set up there for like a summer well like um, like the U of U football stadium, where we're there for six games, they do require me to have hot water. If I'm uh, doing a, I don't know, Taylorsville days, they just want to see that I have running. running water. I have to be able to turn on the water, wash my hands without touching anything, have that water continue running, and then a place to catch the, the waste water, the, 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 the soapy water, the gray water. But... Um, uh, some yeah, yeah I, I so well, and you, you know bring what? up a good point because ninety nine percent of this world and the, and it's changing. They all want to see hot water run. I mean, it's just it just evolves every yeah. year. It gets well, it's a nice thing to have because all of a sudden, if you have a stand that doesn't have it, and you're doing yeah. you're doing events, and all of a sudden you get in an arena, now you got to modify that thing yes. to be able to do it. Yeah. And, and you're right. Most of the ones I'm thinking of are all arenas that I did. So yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, the one day, the one two day, three day events, they just want to see you with running water. But that's here in Salt Lake, um, right. all across Utah. You start getting into LA County, some of those other big cities, they 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 require your hot water. Cool. Okay. Any any questions? That, uh, Lyle hasn't sent any more. Lyle, any other questions? And Lyle actually is, has a delay. Okay. So. I, I may be able uh, to text him quicker. Another thing, and just, just to point out, I guess if we have a minute, uh, I might be plugged in at an event, and I've got the perfect extension cord. I'm the only one on this particular outlet where I plugged in, and my shaver's still running really sluggish. It's because that event has, has wired in many outlets uh, going to the same breaker. So even though I showed up perfect, um, there might be the guy next to me sharing 
my power even though he's not plugged in to the same outlet. And uh, you have to watch for that stuff because you, you can't. You can hurt your shaver or you're going to be tripping breakers. And But uh, the events that, that are specific power requirements, I, I tell them I need the full 20 amps. Yeah, and if uh, and if they so a lot of sometimes they'll be like uh, first one's always free. If you want to buy a second one, I, I always buy the second one too. Just just because people show up with fifty cords, right? I mean, it's and you guys know all about it. They're they're familiar. Yeah, and I don't. I think Sam. I don't think we have another question, so we'll draw it to a close. He just said no, so. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we will catch you. I think we'll actually do it in two weeks from now. We'll, we'll host another one. And uh, if you want to give us suggestions, you can email Aaron at snowy. That's A-A-R-O-N at snowy.com. And you can give us suggestions there. You can even leave some comments here on the discussion uh, of topics that you want us to cover. We'll catch you in two weeks. Thanks.